and that is generating cubic maps first and then converting those into a lat long space if you need to. Cubic maps are also a lot more matte paint friendly. So uh, if I select this, and because I have to do this quite often, I actually have a Python script that sets it up for me. Let me just create it here real quick. And what this does is it gives me six cameras which all together form a cube. So this is my right camera, bottom camera, top, back, front, and left. And you can see all those cameras have a 90 degree field of view and therefore form a perfect cube to photograph the entire environment. But we're splitting up the render effort into six discrete textures so it's a lot easier on your hardware. So let's uh, go ahead and look at the front view again. There's our front view and now we'll do the time echo trick again time echo two three four and so forth and also make sure that you set the time echo method to plus because if you do that you can then use exposure controls to reveal the density of your trail and that will tell you that the denser that trail is the more this area of the environment is being seen by the camera and therefore you might want to pay a bit more attention to it but we'll we'll see that more clearly in a second so ultimately we have 60 frames, so we need to set this to 60. This will be plus, and then we'll run the 60th frame here. And just because I don't have to remember to go to frame 60 to render this, I usually at attach a, a frame hold node afterwards and set that to 60. So now it doesn't matter what frame I'm on, we'll always see all the 60 frames squeezed into a single output. So let's just copy that setup to all those cubic tiles. And that no up here controls which directory the right nodes go into. So let me just open that and we'll just dump it into shot one and overwrite those old ones here. So this is going to be cubic map right, bottom, top and so forth. I'll just select them and render frame one. So now having rendered the pieces of the cubic puzzle, let's reassemble it into a single spherical map by using the spherical transform node, which lives in the transform menu. And you want the input type to be cube, the output type should be lat long, and because it's a lat long, once again, we want to make sure it's a two to one image aspect output. So I'll just choose my lat long format again. And then we'd simply uh, wire up the the inputs. So minus Z will be looking front and I'm going to make sure that the read file checkbox is on so we read the render from disk rather than reprocessing the upstream. Plus Z consequently is looking back so that's right here. Read minus X will be the left view in Nuke. So plus x obviously is right. And then we have minus y, which is the bottom view, read from file, and finally the top view. And if we now look at our lat long, we now have the entire trail unwrapped into a single spherical texture. And if we decrease the density or the increase the exposure, we see the density and that already tells us that the areas here are going to be very heavily motion blurred while this area here which is very dense that's the slow moving pen at the end and we should probably pay good attention to painting detail in here. So that's the basic workflow let me just pen down here to a setup which is really the same I've got my six cubic maps here and the time echo and it's rendered out to disk and all but um, before I put that all back together, what I did was I put a checkerboard underneath, color coded it and labeled it, and then ran that out as one of the cubic tiles for matte painting. So I gave matte painting a right tile. We skipped the bottom because there was nothing to paint there. Then I gave him this tile, this here, and these guys, and finally this one. 
So they could now decide if they wanted to paint on those individual tiles or assemble it into a lat long, which would look like this. They would still know which area they're looking at. If they have some sort of continuity in their, in their matte painting system, then this should help for them. And also the trail obviously tells them that they don't have to worry about painting these areas at all. So what I got back from matte painting were pretty much those areas that only covered these white tiles. So they up those cubic tiles to a resolution that fits. And um, also, which I didn't really explicitly say so far, but it's kind of obvious, this will also tell you about the resolution that you need to output because you know what your final render resolution is. For example, if you render the whole shot in HD, one of those rectangles here is HD meaning 1920 pixels wide and you can extrapolate from that the uh, size of your matte painting. So let's have a look at the canvas lat long with the checkerboards and the labels and now what I got back from matte painting was the painting that just replaces those cubic tiles. We don't worry about the bottom again so I'm just gonna switch over here to what I received back from the matte painting guys and you can see how it all comes together. That's the fun part of it all. And once you've got that set up, just like before, you mirror the thing, you can chuck it on a sphere and run it through the shot camera. So that is a bit of a crazy move, but now from there on we can drop the stuff into our shot and the matte painting guys can do their iterations and we'll just version up our textures that we receive from matte painting. And a quick note on quality, while a spherical transform node does concatenate with other transform nodes upstream, it does not do so downstream. So that means that in this setup we're actually introducing a filter hit in the spherical transform node and then in the scanline render node. However, the benefit of having a single texture map in that long space quite often outweighs the problems of uh, introducing an extra filter hit. But if all you do in your comp is assembling those cubic tiles and then rephotographing it through the shot camera down here, you might want to swap this spherical transform setup with a purely cubic environment to optimize uh, render speeds and quality, but that is covered in an extra tutorial.